Hi everyone, my name's Michelle and I'm on my Loves You GB here on FlossTube but also over on Instagram and Etsy as well. Welcome to the Sunday Morning Briefing. This is FlossTube number 90 and it is the 25th of September today. Welcome along, how's everyone doing? We have definitely had a change of seasons here um, in my little corner of West Wales. It's suddenly got just that little nip in the air, it's gone a little bit colder, a little bit more blustery. My skin has gone, ah! It's the change of seasons, um, my lips have been so dry, it's just definitely coming into winter. It's definitely time to put the sandals away, although they're so comfy, and get out like proper shoes. <laughs> I have managed to wear my sandals all the way through till October half term in previous years, but I don't think that's going to happen this year. I think it's going to start getting, getting really chilly. Um, I've still got a little bit of a... There's an atomic cold going around at the moment and Chris has had it, Ness had a little bit of it and um, I said last week I wasn't feeling feeling great and actually a lovely lady commented, she said as soon as I saw your eyes I knew you weren't, you weren't feeling great. Now I do have to admit that the eyes could have been to do with the cocktails and the beer that I drank the night before but there's definitely something in the air, in the atmosphere that uh, that we're all fighting off so hopefully I'll get through this without too much coughing and spluttering. Right, I've got lots and lots to show you. I've been working on some projects. I haven't done as much stitching as I would have liked to have done and I haven't done the finishing that I wanted to do. I really wanted to have my little bingo card um, pillow to show you this week and every night I promise myself I'm gonna finish it and every night something else has happened. So um, it's still in the pipeline. It will still go onto my Etsy store, but it'll be next week, hopefully. Um, I have got, as I said, some stitching. I've got some charts to show you. A lot of people really liked the chart parade last week. So I've got a mini, a mini version of the chart parade. And actually it's the ones that I pulled out from uh, this quarterly edition of Punch Needle and Primitive Stitcher magazine, which you know, if you watched me before, I love, I rave on about. So I've got those to show you. I've also got right at the end, I mustn't lose that bit of paper because that's got the information on it that I've got to tell you. Right at the end, I've got another one of these. Um, the company contacted me again and asked me if I would like another treat box um, and I said yes definitely. I had such a good response to the last one and I think they must have done as well because um, they offered to send me another one. So I'm gonna have a look at those. I haven't looked other than to see which country it's from and it's from Thailand. Um, I haven't looked to see what's in it. You'll have to excuse me if you see my hands, well you will see my hands while I'm doing this, but I'm covered in little red splatters and around my nails is red. We've been painting the garage doors and it was a case of get the first coat on really quickly before the rain came. So it was uh, splashed about here, there and everywhere. And it's that sort of paint that you need white spirit to get rid of. And so it's just kind of snuck into all the little crevices of my hands. So I can't get rid of it. Before I get started, I'm gonna show you something that she's, that's not <clears throat> cross stitch related but I know there's a, a big following for it um, both in the UK and abroad and that is a Marks and Spencer's tin a Marks and Spencer's tin so I got the two or oh, I got two new ones um, a Halloween one and a Christmas one so I'm just going to show you those and I'm going to show you the two from last year as well because when I went to Marks and Spencer's and saw them they had the tins from last year as well I'm going to show you the ones from last year so we'll start off with the Halloween one so this is the one from this year and it's a hanging lantern. I left the label on it. It did have, note the word did, it did have butter shortbread in it. It doesn't anymore. And then it's got a little green light in it, which I thought was lovely. And as soon as I've taken that sticker off, that'll be fab for Halloween. The one from last year was this one, which was also a hanging one actually. But it was this one. And again, this one had biscuits in it as well. And this one just had an ordinary little orangey light in it. And they were six pounds. I'm pretty sure they were six pounds each. So as I said, if you go looking for the one from this year, you may find the one from last year as well because they had both in my stock. And then the Christmas one 
is the gingerbread house, which again <clears throat> had biscuits in it. Although these are still in the cupboard because I'm not a massive fan of gingerbread actually. Um, so it's the little small, looks like a Dutch house. And it is a, oh, there you go. It winds up and it does play. And I can't remember what it plays. Does it tell me? No, I can't remember what it plays. But that's the one from this year. And then this is the one from last year. So it's a bit smaller than it was last year. Everything's a bit smaller than it was last year. But I think together on the shelf for Christmas, they're gonna look fab. And like I said, they had the one from last year as well as the one from this year. So I just wanted to show you those whilst I had them there because they were in the way. I did do a little bit of finishing from last week and I did some of this actually while I was watching the funeral, the Queen's funeral. Um, and what a, what a thing that was to watch. We watched from about 10 o'clock in the morning all the way through till five o'clock. We didn't sit there continuously, but it was always on. So I think most of the finishing that I did was between the one in Westminster Abbey um, and when they went to Windsor. So it was sort of in between the two. And I, I finished off my Snowflower Diaries chart from the Queen with her corgi. And I put it into this, into this frame. Now, let me just, let's just shift it a little bit, but I think it's actually the, the piece rather than the stitching. Okay, try again. So that is her. She was stitched on murky, 32 count, I wanna say. Um, and I think somebody asked me what threads I've used. I think that they were sulky threads. Looking back, looking back on them, I think they were sulky threads, but I, I couldn't tell you what the colours were, I'm afraid. And it, this was a frame that I picked up in a charity shop, so it does have a little dunkle on there, but I'm quite happy with that. I love the, love the gold, sprayed it gold. And then the little royal cipher that I had done, I decided to turn into a, a hanging ornament. And I actually backed it in black because I actually made this during the funeral. I stitched it during the funeral. So I thought it was a good idea to put put the black on the back just as a sort of a little a little reminder. So in order to make this, all I do is make the top like you would make the top of a drum or the bottom of a drum. So you have a cardboard um, circle, put your design over the top and then do like a running stitch all the way around and gather it, pull it in and then sew it so that it's really nice and tight and then do the same with another piece of card but with black fabric. And then because I can never get the glue to really stick together, I always use some thread and some little tiny stitches and I just sew mine together. And then I just put coloured pins at various places around the outside. And this is one of my favourite types of finishing to do actually, just with the pins around the outside. I think they look really nice. So I just picked a pattern and did those. So there is my, let me go do it that way. There are my two finished pieces that I got done whilst I was watching the funeral. And I have to say those pallbearers for the funeral they, they did it all the way through. So they, even when her body was first up in Scotland, it was the same eight pallbearers that moved the body. Um, and they were just phenomenal. I was looking at the steps going up into St George's Chapel in Windsor and they were really steep. <laughs> they were really steep, but they did, they did brilliantly. The thing I actually stitched on during the funeral was as I planned to, and it is, I've still got a thread hanging here. I just stopped in mid in mid flight is Ambalis by Hands Across the Sea Samplers. So I got quite a bit done actually. I think I'd got the top row done, but during the funeral I got the second row and the third row and brought the border down on both sides, stitched this bit here and then pretty much most of what's left 
is over one. Other than the border, pretty much what is left is over one. So that's just something that I'm gonna just chip away at. I don't mind stitching over one, but it's something that's just gonna build up over time. It would be nice to get it finished before the coronation, before King Charles's coronation, whether that will happen. I'll just show you the chart because I got the download. And I am thinking about doing something slightly different in the bottom. And I've seen several different versions of it. This is the chart that you can get from Hands Across the Sea. I've seen several different versions of it here. Some of which include actually the royal cipher that I um, charted. If you want that, it's on my Instagram, um, just as a, a freebie. Now the, the um, I'll try and see if I can link the uh, the post. I think I did last week, um, but it's the picture is of the stitching of this, and then the chart is behind it. But I'll see if I can link the individual post, and then you'll have no bother. So yeah, it would be nice to get this done before the coronation. So they're thinking June, possibly. I have I have no like hotline to the palace or anything but that's just what I've heard in the press so we'll see if that comes to to fruition um the other things that I've stitched on <laughs> I've done a bit of secret stitching for a, a swap that I'm doing that's got to be finished by next week um I started this one this is by the elfin forest on Etsy and I'll put a picture up there of what he looks like. He's just so much fun. I just really love him. Um, and I had done a bit more on this but I've swapped, I'm swapping the black over. So I'd stitched in a single strand of black silk and I decided that I wanted the black a bit, a bit bolder. So I'm busy taking that out but stitching over in sulky, black sulky. And the pot, uh, he said the pomegranate then the pumpkin <laughs> is in different colors of sulky as well so i think he'll just all end up being in sulky and then the stitch along with yaz from yasmin's made with love and sarah um, and a few other people the one the rockin robin from love pop it and i have to put a picture up um the only thing i've done on that is unpick my mistakes <laughs> so we're back to where I think it is. I think all the dark red was okay, but we'll see. <laughs> this piece of fabric doesn't seem to like me. I love it, and it's from Fox and Rabbit, one of their, um, I think it was the last fabric of the month, Desert Taipan, but both the things I'm stitching on, I keep making mistakes, so um, I'm sure it's just me. I'm sure it's just me. If you are in the Fox and Rabbit, club and I've just totally lost what it's called fabric of the month club oh my god that wasn't even difficult um I have had the notification to say that it's on its way so the shipping notification that I get when it when um fox and rabbit take it to the their post I've had that so normally it's four or five days and then it's with me and then I shall post it out so fingers crossed you should get it before next weekend if not, it'll be the early part of next week, shipping delays aside. So if everything goes as it normally does, that's when you'll get it. Now, the one that I've done most on, and I was quite surprised that I've done quite a lot on this because I just picked it up and I just, I just started on it. Because normally what I do is after I film, sorry, I'm just reaching things. After I film, I kind of leave all my stuff just up in this room and then go down. And while it's um, the video's writing and, and going up, I'm like, well, what should I stitch? So I normally just pick something that's by my chair and it's usually something I've not stitched on for a little while. And that was the case with this one. I just thought, oh yeah, I'll, I'll stitch on that. Um, and it's Phantom Plantation by Glendon Place. And this is a stitch along that I'm doing with Steve from Crafty Stitchers. Um, he didn't know he was doing the stitch along until I bullied him into it you might remember, but I know he started it as well. And I'm doing it on a piece of fabric that I dyed for the occasion. So 
I had ironed it and now obviously where I've just folded it a massive crease has just formed so let's try and fold it in a bit like that there we go so that's where I am at the moment now this piece of fabric is actually lighter than it's showing it's it's showing up quite dark and so before I'd literally done just that little bit so I put the top roof line in although it's got a, a pinnacle there I have put the moon in the moon was so much fun to stitch I loved stitching that moon that is stitched with um, in fact let me insult the back of the list where is it it's a Gloriana thread oh no it's not sorry it's Caron collection lemon and lime so it's a Gloriana no Caron collection <laughs> lemon and lime and it's brilliant it's just got this lovely variegation in it with lemon and lime and so I've come over here and down and where I want to go with it I want to try and come down here so that I can put this tree in. I did think about trying to bridge across to the tree off of here, but just in case there's something wrong up here, I'd rather come down and then go up that way because then I can place the tree hopefully in the in the right place. Um, so the the colours at the moment are quite similar to the fabric. But there's a lot of back stitching, and then there's going to be a much darker tree coming up here. So I think by the time, let me see if I can get it to be right, probably about there. I think by the time that I've I've done that, it'll be it'll be looking fab. So yeah, I spent two or three nights on that one, probably three nights actually, because I really did enjoy stitching it. I'm using all the called for colours because there's loads um, <laughs> and I dare not because you can swap, you know, a couple of colours, I think, or a chart with a few colours. But when it comes to something like that, that's really hard to just swap because there's something ends up being too close to something else. Right, where have I got to? I'm going to have to have a look at my list now. So, yeah, that's all my stitching. Freebie. Um, I'm going to show you the freebie as a picture up here because uh, the printed chart is very pale. Um, you can see it fine, but it just wouldn't it wouldn't show if I showed you. Um, and it's by now. I am going to have to look at this. Um, Il Cassetto de Botoni. Botoni. Um, and a lovely lady called Janice messaged me and said, "Have you seen this one?" Now, the thing that I like about this chart is the fact that it's really, really simple stitching, but you can use all of those beautiful fabrics. You know, sometimes you buy a fabric and you, you get it and you think it's beautiful and it is amazing. And then you look at it and you go, but what am I actually going to stitch on it? Um, the fabric is so beautiful, you think, oh, I'll just frame the fabric. But this, I think, would be a really nice Halloween design with a great fabric behind it. You could, you could put anything behind it. So that's why I picked that one. I've also got a giveaway. I've also got a giveaway. Now, Carol, who is Carol X Stitch on Instagram, but samplers and stitches on, just make sure I've not got half of something else. Yes, I have. Uh, samplers and stitches on Etsy released this fab fab chart. And I actually put it in my basket. And then the next day I had an email from Carol saying that she'd like to share a copy of the chart with me and two copies to give away so I'm going to show you this one it's called Halloween at the Tower and I think that's just amazing it says in the grass if the ravens leave the tower the kingdom will fall so I love that that's a perfect perfect rendition of the tower there you know exactly that that's the Tower of London and it says at the top all Hallows Eve so yeah, fabulous. Right, what should we go for? It's got to be Raven, hasn't it? So if you would like to enter for this one, you could be anywhere in the world because it's a PDF copy, um, then put the word Raven somewhere in your comment or just put Raven if you haven't got time to do anything else. And then I will draw that next week. 
but you get the legend so it's stitched in a mixture of gentle arts weeks dye works and uh, classic color works and a couple of dmc's it is 180 by two by 123 sorry 180 by 123 um and you can either print out the color chart which is great now i'm just going to show you a very small portion of the chart there so you can either print out the color chart or there is a black and white the reason i wanted to just show you a small part, portion of the chart is because it's nice and big it's a really nice big clear chart so i've printed out the color version because i tend to work from color um more than black and white actually because i like that added sort of kick in the pants to make sure i'm picking the right color um, but i know some people really like black and white so fabulous chart i loved it as soon as i saw it and then when when carol messaged me i felt doubly doubly lucky so halloween at the tower if you if you don't want to wait you can go and grab it from samplers and stitches and i will link all their info down below but if you want to enter then put the word raven um, and i'll draw two winners next week what else have we got I'm going to do a bit of stitchy kindness first. I had a lovely lady called Tammy message me um, and said that she had something she wanted to send to me. And so she sent me, lovely lady, two Christmas books. Now I think I know the reason that she sent me these Christmas books because I've been stitching those Christmas Santas and I'll be really sad when those Christmas Santas are finished. Now in this book particularly, there are some fabulous Santas, a bit like the ones that I've been stitching. So let me show you just a couple of them. So there's the charts for all of those in there. These books are by, is it Gentle Arts? Leisure Arts, sorry. Um, Leisure Arts, and Leisure Arts do some of the best kind of Christmas patterns they really do so I'm not showing all of them just just some of them when you get these books you always get the color po photos at the beginning and then all the charts are towards the back now they produce one of these books every year I think but I didn't have this one, so I was so excited to get it. And I can't wait. I really like that one, actually. I've got a bit of a thing about yellow Santas. I've never stitched a yellow Santa yet, but I really like them. So these are very, very like the Santas that I have been doing. I don't know whether they're the same designer, whether the lady that designed the four that I've been stitching ever designed I like that one too I don't think I'll put it on a jumper but I like it um, ever designed for leisure arts but they're very very similar so thank you so much for those I like those two stand up ones as well those are really nice sorry I'll just I'll, I'll just sit and look at my books <laughs> did I miss one at the front there's a stock in there on that one so thank you so much for those that was so kind of you to send to send those ones this one's got a few different different charts in it it's got some more smaller ones some more kind of ornament type ones um, it's not so easy to show through this one because the the pictures are all interspersed rather than all at the front that's the sort of thing that you would find in this one. So thank you so much. Right. Punch Needle and Primitive Stitcher magazine. So I've been getting this magazine for ages. I, I consider it a necessary, sorry, just checking that I haven't missed some, a necessary purchase. And I've printed out the ones from this edition that I really, really like. There's no punch needle ones in, 
in what I've printed out because although I've got a punch needle I've never done any um, because I keep thinking about doing it and then I'm like do you need another hobby really do you need another one and so I haven't done any of it so these are just the cross stitch ones they're not all the cross stitch ones they're just the ones that I really really liked um, so there's this one autumn stars and this is by the sub rosa if you've never been onto the sub rosa's website uh, onto oh, their etsy site sorry it's amazing they've got some fantastic designs on there so this one is called autumn stars obviously i picked out a teresa kogut one this one's called black cats are seen and when witches go riding and black cats are seen the moon laughs and whispers tis near halloween which i really like i'm not going to say i really like them all because i wouldn't have printed them if i didn't so this one is by barbara anna this is called sawane dreams i love that little green witch she did a, a dreaming witch actually that was on Creative Poppy as a PDF, which I've got the chart for, but I've not stitched yet. But she's fabulous. Bucket Brigade Halloween. So this is by Stitching with the Housewives. I'm not sure as I do this one on black. I don't know what colour I would do it on. Although it, does, it looks fab on black, but I'm not sure I would do it on black. So there's that classic sort of chalkboard design that they've made their own. And this one I really liked as well. If you had a, a quick stitch that you needed to do for um, an exchange or just an extra little bowl filler, this would be so, so quick to do. It's called Halloween Parade by um, Luminous Fibre Arts. And again, because it's just black, you could use whatever fabric you had. And it's not that big. It is... No, it doesn't, it doesn't give me the the count so let's have a quick look it is about 60 uh, 54 by 95 something like that oh that's on the front 95 by 53 so I wasn't far off <laughs> now this one I like this is by Cherry Hill Stitchery and I like a lot of the Cherry Hill Stitchery ones because they're quite often um text heavy and I quite like text text heavy charts so this is called Maple Hollow and it says fall festival pumpkin patch and corn maze hay rides this way so i love that this is lovely as well boo by liz matthews i think that's great just a simple little cushion finish <clears throat> little pillow finish and i really like the blue trim around it actually or purpley trim what she used let's have a look the trim is licorice, so maybe it's black actually, and just looks blue. I would imagine it is actually looks more black, but I like the blue, and I like actually these little things. They look blue too, but I don't think they are. I'm pretty sure it's not just my printer either, because I remember that was what attracted me to it before I printed it out. So I think I would switch those to like a purpley blue. And then this one I like too, Grateful Heart. This is by Twin Peak Primitives. This one's a little bit bigger. I really actually like just that bit. I'd be really tempted to just do that bit with the pumpkins surrounding it. I love it all, but I, I particularly like that bit. So that is everything I think let me just check oh no I did buy some fabric I did buy some fabric I bought this one now these both came from an eBay seller um, I'll just see if it has a name on the salvage for you but I don't think I've got the salvage on my bit no so pumpkins and ravens so I'm going to be using this to finish my Alfin forest off because it matches so brilliantly and then Teresa Kogut has a Halloween line out and there's lots of different ones and I could have gone mad but I didn't I just bought 
the one that's got the panels on it. Now the reason I bought the one with the panels on it is because what I'm thinking about doing, because I've got a lot of her Halloween charts from being in the Patreon, I thought about finding a little stitch to make as a, as a drum top and then using the, the panel, just the top bit of the panel, to make, to make the drum edge. And I've got sort of three different ones. <clears throat> I didn't think I was going to keep it to the end. <coughs> Excuse me. Three different ones that I could do. But I just love Teresa Kogut. Just chuck it back over there. <laughs> Okie dokie. So if you do not want to watch me pick through and eat stuff from this treat box, this treat box here, then that is all the stitching um, and the stitchy talk. And I will see you next week. If you do want to see what's in this stitchy box, <laughs> stitchy box, treat box, then let's have a look and see. So this is by a company called Try Treats. And I'm probably just messing up all of their um, lovely packaging by holding it up. And there is a code, Mama Loves You GB, for 15% off the first box if you want to grab one of their boxes. I'll put all their details down below. <coughs> now this is the thing, I haven't bought a drink up either, which could prove fatal if there's any of those like real dry crisps in there. <laughs> so this is how it comes packaged. And I have managed to slightly mess up their, their packaging. So I do know it's Thailand. So let's have a look and see what we've got. So you get a welcome to Thailand card with all the information on from there. And I think there's lovely, Ness really likes those. And she really likes the sort of like explore Thailand card because we had an explore Poland, Poland one as well. Um, and the Thailand recipe of the month is Thai iced tea. That looks really nice. Thai black tea, hot boiling water, sweetened condensed milk, evaporated milk, sugar and crushed ice. I am all over that. That sounds good. I don't like coffee though. I don't like iced coffee, but that sounds nice. Right. So this is what, this is what we've got here. So I don't know how best to show this because it's going to fall off my lap. Let me put that there. Right. So let's start off with the stuff that looks easy to work out. Spicy lobster crisps. Okay. Okay. I like prawn cocktail crisps, but we'll give those a go. What else have we got? Puff wheat. Uh, it's a caramel flavoured snack that's puffy in texture and sweet and light. Okay, that doesn't look too bad. Triple M stick. Sorry, this is triple M stick. This is roasted seaweed, a crispy coated snack, well seasoned and spicy. Okay. What's this? That looks like a wafer. We had wafers in the last one and they were like these cream coloured wafers and they tasted exactly like the pink wafers that you get over here. So this one is a cream wafer. Yeah. Some of those little bad boys. Now I like those already. Those are like the little, is it the Mikado sticks or something like that? So it's just like a little tiny stick with a little tiny bit of chocolate on. So you need an entire box of those generally speaking to you feel like you've had enough chocolate. Another wafer. A lot of spicy stuff in here. Spicy tasty sticks. Chicky sticks. I'm guessing we put two and two together and yes they are chicken flavoured potato sticks but they are savoury. Oh my goodness we've got all sorts in here. This is, this is crazy. Right we've got a squid snack here. Goodness. This is sweet and spicy as well. This is unique savoury flavour, chewy in texture, truly unique snack. Unique generally means nobody else blinking likes it. 
and then we've got a load of these little cappuccino candy things which i won't be trying because i don't like really coffee flavored stuff um and a mango gummy well we've got to go for those haven't we and those and that and maybe we'll try the lobster crisps as well and like i said i've not bought a drink up so this could be a mistake <laughs> I can't read any of this. I'm not allergic to anything. So, I've got to get into it first of all. Nearly had to reach for a pair of me uh, sewing scissors there, but luckily my mum's got a pair sat on the window still. Squid seafood. So it comes in a little tray. And it looks, looks a bit like vinyl, to be honest. <laughs> right, let's try it. That's really spicy. <laughs> oh, it's not horrible, but it's really spicy. This is a mistake not having a drink. <coughs> and it, I was gonna say it's got a bit of a fishy taste to it, but it would be seafood. <laughs> There's every chance I'm gonna have to pause and go and get a drink. In fact, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm back. Oh, that was a bit spicy. Right, let's have a go with this one. This is this triple M stick. Again, I can't read any of it. Let's have a look. It's just like a seaweed. A seaweed roll. That's okay. I quite like seaweed. Let's try. A bit of that looks well in my eye. That's okay. That's not that um, spicy. I don't think. <coughs> There's every chance I might joke on it. Or maybe it is. God, my teeth are itching. Okay. <laughs> I think this we last two things we've had spicy fishy stuff. This is gonna have spicy chicken stuff. Let's see. Oh okay. I thought they were gonna be like in the UK we get these really thin um either salt and vinegar or um plain like salted crisps. But these look a bit more like the bits you get out of um Oh, what do you call that? Bombay mix. That sort of thing. That's not too bad. It does, it's a bit like eating a pot noodle without putting anything in it. Any water in it. But no. They're all right, actually. Yeah, they're okay. Spicy lobster. Does it give me an indication of how spicy? Mind you, their idea of my spicing might be different. Give it a whirl. Right, you have to be strong to live in Thailand. indestructible packaging That's it looks. this is like a baked crisp thing they're really nice they're really nice I'll tell you what I bet they'd be nice with a bit of dip as well mm. 
So, recommend those. Recommend those. That's all right, but it might go in your eye when you eat it. That stuff. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What else have we got? That's puffed wheat. I didn't look at this properly. To me, that's just sugar puffs. Someone's trying to flog a little packet of sugar, sugar puffs there. Let's see. Ooh, it's got a bit more of a, a caramel coating to it. It looks like a combination between sugar puffs and butter kiss. It's got that really strong, like fake caramel flavour. But mm, that's okay. They're quite nice. They're quite nice. Let's just see. Let's have a go with the mango gummy just to finish off and cleanse the palette. Well, if you've got this far, it's been lovely talking to you. I can definitely recommend these sweet boxes. They're really good fun, actually. They are really good fun. Um, as I said, I'll put all the details. Just check out missing all the details down below about where you can you can get them from. And I know I had a look on the website last time. I know there's different levels of treat box you can get depending on how many how many treats they put in. This didn't come with it, by the way, just in case you're wondering. And I'm not sponsored by Pepsi. Pepsi would like to sponsor me. I could do that. So this is a gummy, like a mango gummy. It is. I can confirm. It just tastes like a mango gummy. Although now I've put the most chewy thing in when I need to say goodbye. So I'll see you next week. Stay classy, Stitchers.